South Acres. I love the music. The Greens. No, nah, stop. Hip. <laughs> no, nah, stop. We got Ace House. Real hip hop. All new 937 to beat. Yo, my name is Ashley with two E's. Yeah. And I got two special guests yes. that are here all the time. We put them on the <laughs> payroll. <laughs> I might as well call Kiki Uncle Kiki, That's Uncle Don Key. I'm with it. We got Lil Kiki and Marcus Clay in the building. What up, what's what going up? on? What's good? How y'all doing? Thank we, you for I having mean, us. I'm working. good. Thank you for coming, number one. And coming all the time. He come up here all the time, y'all. Got to pay parking. Well, you ain't got to pay parking, but he got to pay gas. Coming up to Uptown. I'm trying to get back <laughs> to the old me. I'm trying to work hard, you know, and, and you get what you deserve when you work for it. That's me. So I'm working, doing what I do. Very much. Now, even though I've met Marcus now like 45 times, right? Definitely. for people that have not met you yet, they're not in tune to you, right. uh, give us a little intro. Where are you from? Houston, Texas, Mo What's, City. Okay. To be exact, Marcus Clay, M-A-R-Q-U-S. That's Marcus with a Q, not Marquis. Marquez, <laughs> Marcus with a Q. You know, light-skinned niggas with Qs in their name. Just extra. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, Super I'm extra. Brown. I'm, I'm a brownie, man. <laughs> so what... Tell us about your music. What are what do you do? Sing, rap, rap. Okay, definitely. What where's your inspiration come from? I mean, um, th- given that you're with Kiki, right, right, right. yeah. What'd you grow up on? Uh, I grew up on Pac, Big Nas, J, Big L, mm-hmm. Pun, um, Beanie Siegel. My fault, John. <laughs> Bean, you <laughs> Beans like uh, all the early Rockefeller, um, Kendrick Lamar, J Cole, all that. Really? How old are you? I'm 19. Damn, you nineteen? Yeah. I thought you were like twenty five or no, something. Nah, That's nah, what nah, I'm nineteen for sure. Nah, nineteen. Glad I didn't invite you to drink or I shit. <laughs> I get that a lot. I get, I get around the age a lot. Now nah, I'm nineteen. So growing up in Houston, and you you just named a lot of like other region right. like influences. Definitely. How did you get onto them? Just like the internet. The just, internet. The okay. internet and people wow. around me. The internet and people around me, and mm-hmm. just my 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 big cousins and my uncle. You know, my my, my uncle was a big a big Jay Z fan and. I would always hear the blueprint, you know what I'm saying, with my mom. Actually, the blueprint is my favorite album, one of my favorite albums of all time, because it was sentimental. Like I used to sleep on the floor to it, and all I had was a a, a radio, like a little boom box, and mm-hmm. I just had a, the blueprint on repeat. So just from being around it my whole life, peers and stuff listening to it around me, I just kind of adapted and soaked it all in. You don't know how happy that makes me, because wow. I get so worried that this generation coming up, like my kids' generation, like right. they're gonna be coming up on like. Six nine and blue man. face and all. <laughs> you, <laughs> like, I, I mean, I guess, man, definitely. You just gotta put it in front of them, you know. Listen, so Kiki, how did you get involved with Marcus? Um, um, um first of all, his mom is a friend from the family. Okay, you know, so I um, I kind of already was in this, you know, knew about him, heard about him, seen him. Heard all his music. Me and his mom got a brother and sister relationship. So for years, I would just, he was doing it. was so young. I wasn't at a mature stage where I pretty much even knew what to do with it or go. So as time grew and he, you know, and we tapped back in, it was like a connection. I reached out. They reached out. We kind of done it together and was like, man, let's see what we can do for each other. I can do this. This is what I can do. You talented. You bring this to the table. We can start from scratch, do some hard work, and let's see where it go. And you're stepping into the management lane, right? Yeah, one yeah. step at a time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And just trying to learn the game of not coming in and saying I know everything. I got a little cachet and a little game from over here. So if I can put that game with this game, make a couple calls, and you know what I'm saying, maybe I can. And when I say managing, I don't have five or six or seven. I'm just doing one thing at a time, seeing if I can get better with one thing at a time, seeing how I can make this prosper and learn something from this, and then we can see where we go. So, so when you – you know, wanted to step into that, into management. What made him stick out? Was it work ethic, talent? Was it? Well, my thing is, man, like, everybody, you know, all entertainers, anybody that's got a street mentality, they got an ego. So I always feel like from an ego standpoint, man, I got something that I can offer to a game. I want to help somebody. But I always just, for the last couple of years, picked and choose my spots of what I wanted to do. So I just feel like he had a universal talent. And I was like, man, that's kind of used to, man, most people think I'm going to gravitate to something that I used to do, Mm -hmm. like an artist that came from what I came from or did what I did. I was like, maybe if I can take some of my street game, put it with his extreme talent, we can put that together and gather some of these fans and gather some of these fans and do something totally different. That's what I was thinking. So that's all it was, man. I wasn't saying that I hadn't heard 
his type of talent no more. But I'm saying him being so young and that talented mm. to see if um I can put a little sprinkle some of this kind of game on. He can take what he got and we can see if we can just try some different routes instead of going, you know, the ideal route that people think I will go. Yeah. And it's an honor to be working with Kiki because I being from Houston, I grew up on, you know, Kiki for sure. Yeah. Kiki Scarface Zero, just to name a few. So it's it's just an honor to be soaking up that game right now firsthand from a person that I grew up listening to as well in the city for sure. You know, it's a, it's a golden time too cuz young Houston's really coming up right All now. All right, definitely. And yeah. I had a I saw both Maxwell and Megan at the BT Awards. Right, dope. And I asked them uh what do you feel about this new I wouldn't call it a wave, but the new movement, like the second the second coming of Houston right now. Right. And everybody has such different sounds. Like Tisa Korean is different from Maxo, is different from Megan, is different from Don Tolliver and Travis, right. obviously. Right. Or whatever. Do you find uh do you find a stigma being from Houston? People think you're supposed to sound a certain way? No. I mean, no, not at all. I mean, because once you once you give them who you are, I mean, there it is. I mean, I know it could be like that because of your region and, you know, the stuff that's being put out from the region. But no, nah, I mean, no. Nah. It's just delivering and showing them what you got. So, the Kiki, when you said he has a universal sound, like, what do you mean? Like, he could... Well, the thing is, you know, <laughs> us, man, people, when I say us... Early Houston music, man, we were we were cast into doing it for the culture. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of us got caught in. Our culture was so big. It was rising. We were so much into it that a lot of music that we made, it was based off the culture. No different than how the Migos, man, they make their music to the culture for what they're doing. We was doing the same thing. So when I say Universal, he wasn't, it wasn't that his, he came in trying to make his music based on the Houston stigma of how we do it or whatever. I seen him. You know, he trying to he rapping this kind of way. He got he can do it the East Coast sound. You know, with the quality of it, cause kind of laid back Southern California type. So I was saying it's more universal. A lot of rappers with us, our culture was so big. People want to represent it so mm. much and be from it. To most of their styles and most of their come offs right. was related to our culture. Definitely, because you know it's a hard. It, we set a bar. Uh, people watched us become independent and hood legends and street legends and Houston legends and you know and people were looking at how we were living the the credibility and 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 how much people loved us from everywhere else that most it was a lot of young rappers that was coming up trying to follow that you know what I'm saying with him being so young he was able to skip that kind of mm -hmm. fall into the knowing his heritage but at the same time getting to be like Maxo Megan them with their own style and kind of doing their own thing that's kind of great for both sides you know what I'm saying cuz if you if you want to set trends and you do it how you want to do it and a lot of rappers came up trying to repeat our culture yeah at first, you know? I'll, and, I, that's for sure yeah, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? So, and it was hard to get out of you know what i'm saying like and you know and at the same time not making that something bad for them not only was it hard to get out of it was hard for us to stop you know giving that putting it to, back into that same culture that we were so that was just I just wanted to get somebody doing something different than how I was doing it because that culture and that lane, I'm kind of, I'm all right right there. I don't really need nobody to show me how to do that. I got that. Yeah. So with, with saying Universal, maybe I could take something different that he's doing. And, you know, you know, we don't have you know, too many rappers here saying, man, they love Kendrick Lamar. They love mm -hmm. J. Cole. You know, most of them, we love the street cats and love, with, which is fine too. So I was just trying something different. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad you brought up, like, how in your day that – Everybody was independent. Y'all were doing your own thing. And now everyone thinks that with the internet, they can do the one song pop off and like do it by themselves. Do you think that's possible now? Man, <laughs> um, different trends happen. They catch on from the, I call it the YouTube age. You become a video sensation. Hard. That's hard. You know what I'm saying? I don't think it's, e I don't think that that route is easier than, than the hard work route. But this is the thing that it does. It's more visible yeah. than the hard work route. And that's what everything is about right now. You know, when they see something happen from YouTube or something happen from something like that, they able to visualize it and see it happen in front of their face. They able to see little Nas or whatever he was doing, that song just going big and they able to see it. Well, well the, how we did the work, the hard work on the road and gone seven, eight, nine days and kissing babies and driving far <laughs> and doing mm -hmm. that type of work right there. Well, that's not able, they're not able to really see that. So I don't think that, you know, one or two of these may happen at a time, you know, some some super sensations, but the hard work ones, 
you know, they gonna they gonna happen more in my opinion because they gonna uh, respect it and be more grateful to that hard work. Some of these man, some of these sensations they come and go. Yeah. You know, you might get that one two year run out of them. It may be a great song, and then that's it. And and you know, that's when the music business is chewing you up and spitting you out. Yep. When it go like that. You know what I uh, learned from my PD from Michael is that you can be as popping as you want on Instagram, but nothing's a substitute for what he calls a Jesus principle. Was just Jesus back in the day. He didn't have Instagram, so he had to go and actually travel and shake people's hands right. and have conversations, right, yeah. give them experiences to like know them. Right. And he's like, I don't care how many followers you have, like the Jesus principle, like people having real life experiences with you. That's you what's going to keep and you. Followers ain't customers. Yeah, that's and you can buy them now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't, but, ain't hey, yeah I'm talking about customers. <laughs> like you. Oh yeah. I'm talking about buying. You know, I keep telling people, man, if you had a hundred thousand followers and they all spent a dollar a year with you. Yeah. Just, just imagine you'd be, you be good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Them ain't the numbers, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so you got to work You got to work for it. And you feel better. You feel you feel more, you know, you appreciate it more. You know, you deserve it. And yeah. you, you really work for it, man. And, man, that's what's kind of missing from the game, I think, a little bit, man, the hard work because everybody is addicted. The game is a little easier from the phone. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do this, do this. But, you know, you got to be, you got to have savvy in either one of them. Yeah. You know, something that I'm learning now, especially because of my position here at a radio station, is uh, our generation, Marcus, they mm -hmm. just want everything handed to them, right? Most of the time, most of them. We have those uh, outliers that work. Mm -hmm. But what I've learned from some of the upcoming artists now at Houston is a lot of them say you got to leave Houston to get love and come back. Do you agree with that? Uh. <laughs> You want to say something first? Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, you feel a type of way, Marcus? I used to. Okay. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. I, I used to, but I just feel like if you're putting in the work, you know, you have no choice but to be seen. Because I started out with Lupe Fiasco. That was my mentor mm -hmm. at 10 years old. So I was on my first major tour at 11 years old out, outside the U.S. So it was like when I came back to my city and, it, you know, it was just like it wasn't believable that this kid was – this young spitting like I was spitting and with Louis, like it was just, um, it was unbelievable. And I seen that, dang, my city not even like, it's, it, it's, it's not a gravitation how it was when I performed in Rhode Island. You know, you know, like yeah. it was just different reactions, but the older I got, the more I realized it's all about the work. You know, it's just about the work you put in. If you put in enough work in your city, people gonna recognize you. So yeah. people, real quick, people are gonna ask, cause I have to break it down to people. Right. What is the work? They need, they, they, that's mean, what they're, not understanding, I guess. I mean, just promoting yourself. I mean, just mm -hmm. do, doing what it takes to be seen. You know what I'm saying? Not chasing, not clout chasing, but just putting in the work. You know, putting out projects or uh, staying adamant on your social media the right way. You yeah. know, promoting music only instead of clout. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. You know, just promoting your brand. I you guess. mean not trying to stand on a stage with 500 dudes in the DJ booth? That, that ain't gonna help you. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and I don't knock nothing. Like, you know what I'm move? saying? To each his own, but <laughs> yeah. that's, that's not for me. You know? Yeah. Work is living it, mm -hmm. eating it, and sleeping it. Hmm. Man, that work because that's what it's gonna pretty much take. The game overcrowded. You know what I'm saying? It's not. It's not. It's not like it used to be where it was just this is a couple, this many rappers or a few, and this man. The game has rappers and rappers and rappers and rappers. Situations, deals, lots of money being spent everywhere. So right now you got to when you talking about putting in the work, you got a lot of work to do because. The competition is so stiff, and it's not always based on the talent. They not yep. right. they not deciding these people by talent. They most of the time deciding them by how much work they can get out of them, how visible they really can make them, mm -hmm. how can they get them here and get them now. And the, the, it's one thing that you can have it, but are you willing to put that you know put that in? So you know, my thing is about the love part is about going out the city and coming back for the love. My thing to that is what kind of love. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you looking for you just, you know, are you looking for the love of saying I'm doing something y'all should be feeling it because I'm from here. Mm -hmm. I don't need that's that's in any city people gonna leave if you're trying to get that right there, man. If you if you love is organic, man. If you doing what you supposed to do, putting that love out, showing the love is gonna come back, man. It be just you can't you can't expect. The city or nobody, I tell people all the time to just embrace what you're doing just because you're saying you're doing it. Because it's, 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 it's it just imagine on if we done that to every single, you know what I mean? Everybody, 
man, I'm doing, I'm rapping. I got this here. I'm a manager. I'm a beat maker. I'm doing this here. So it don't mean that you saying, man, I'm from Houston. Man, they ain't feeling me. I'm finna go and go leave because, you know. No, that work that you finna go put in out of town is showing the out of town people that you unknown. You ain't going down there telling them, I'm 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 such and such, I'm such and such, you mm-hmm. should be feeling. You're going down there to put in the work that you need to for them to feed you. Yeah. That's the same work you need to do at the house. And they're going to feed you. That's for all of them, you know what I'm saying? Because I, people think that's coming from me because I got the love here first mm-hmm. and I didn't have to leave. It's not really mm-hmm. like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got to go out of town, too, man, right? Houston is a city that, even with me, they make you earn it. Oh, yeah. People self-made. People, you know what I'm saying? Like, people people are are happy and content with the hood. Man, you got people, man, that... Let me tell you what I mean by that. Man, you got big stars that can come here for a show, man. It can be big as uh, 50 Cent or some East Coast or something. Man, you got people in Houston to go to the same club and the same bar that they go to every Sunday because they love that vibe. They don't care that this man <laughs> is here. He is, yeah. he is a five-time Grammy winner or what he doing here. Man, I want to go to D-Bar or something where I go every Sunday. And, man, I'm going to catch him on TV. And with, so they make you just earn it here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, hey, man, the beehive will make bee earn it. <laughs> they it's just how it is yeah. here. so you know what I'm saying I don't think that you gotta go out of town and get the love I just think that you gotta have the same expectation of work that you would have to do out of town you don't have to do it here it ain't gonna be no saying I'm from Houston y'all should be feeling me cause I'm cause I'm from here yeah that ain't gonna happen but dude it's very apparent from just as I'm learning more about people and what other artists say that Houston has a very crabs in the barrel mentality do you agree with that I guess that's what they're saying. Like, I need to go get shine so y'all can see that I'm respected here. Then I come back and now y'all want to mess with me. Well, like that the thing, thing. I agree. The, 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 yeah. the, the, mm-hmm. thing about, the thing about it is, man, I agree. It's, it's two sides to that. Mm-hmm. It's two sides to that. Mm-hmm. It's, more of, it's more of this here, man. I would Before I call it a crabs in a barrel mentality, it's more of an every man for itself. You know what I'm saying? Which not in the back. What I mean by that is we own a... We on an independent, we selling millions of records and all this down here in the city. We don't have no deal. We doing it on our own. So you're gonna you it's gonna be hard to tell somebody who drove seven hours with cassettes and CDs, mm-hmm. went over hills, turned corners, uh, kissed babies, worked on mixtapes, <laughs> did shows in all these country towns, every every western town in Texas, every small county country town in Louisiana, it's gonna be hard to tell them, man. Hey man, he got my CD. Put me on. It ain't. Yeah, it's not a crabs in the barrel mentality. It's a man. Do you understand where I came from mm-hmm. to get where I supposed to die? I got here. You know what I'm saying? So what are you expecting? I ain't holding. I ain't holding you down from doing nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's not a crabs in the barrel mentality. Cause what am I stopping you from doing? You basically saying, see that that you know, my hard work or whatever. We we just had to get it out the mud. We didn't start as a hip hop. Um, see that we weren't going downtown and Def Jam downtown, yeah. Of the records downtown. <laughs> you know, this is a real get it out the mud. Any type of name that this city has given itself in hip hop, it was built off sweat. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's, it's I don't think there's True. a crabs in the barrel mentality because I don't see none of them holding me down as I'm trying to get out of here. They basically telling me if you're gonna get out of here, it's gonna be behind the work that you did. Mm. But earning it, like you said, earning it. Yeah, earning it, and, and and man, that's no different. That's no different than than Mark Cuban or some of these millionaires. I like you now. That's the whole world. I like you now because you got me. Yeah, I'm talking. I'm a millionaire. You're a millionaire. How you doing now? So people think, man, when I get on, now they want to talk to me. People that's on talk to people that's on. That happens. It ain't just in our rap industry right now. It's a lot of doors that you walking in in radio that you tried to walk in in your other life and you probably couldn't walk in. But yeah. Now, um, you know, I'm Ashley. I feel like he's out with two vision for yourself. In. Wait, what did you say, Ashley with two E's? Kiki yeah. knows. Put some respect and on my I name. I can walk in how I want to walk in now. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I feel it. It's just different different vibes and, and different. Uh, but it, I don't really, you know, I don't see nobody. I don't never look down in my career or nothing that I didn't accomplish and say it was something about the city that stopped me from getting it. Yeah. Um, Marcus, you said. I feel Earlier, like it's all you what you envision right. for yourself. I mean, yeah. if you feel like you got to leave to get where you want to go, then do it. 
And it's all, I, it, I play, think you should, it play I a think big you part should, too. I think you should. I, I'm basically saying what he's saying. I think you should leave and go work because you just supposed to and you have to. And oh, that's yeah. what getting this about. I don't think you should leave, go to work, and blame it on the I'm city. doing it because yeah. the city yeah. was trying to, you know what I'm saying? And, and my thing is this here. <laughs> if the city doing them so bad like that, and I would think, why is it so significant to, significant for them to come home and still become something? In the city, they want to make sure that the because you would think, man, if you had to leave, you know, actors wake up and move to California all the time, yeah, and never go back home. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I'm talking about move from small towns, and so my thing is, people, man, the love of the city is just the love of the city because most people that's from here that make it, they still want to come back and celebrate themselves from being here. They yeah, because they want to put on, yeah, like the new girl, um, Lizzo, the pop pop girl. Yeah. Like she's from here. No, I didn't even know she, she was from here. Yeah, I didn't know she was <laughs> so, yeah. from here. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Yeah, she was like, yeah, I'm, she was telling a story how Desi's child performed at a Walmart or something, and she like skipped school. She's like, yeah, I went to this school in Houston. I'm like, I didn't even know you from Houston. That's crazy, <laughs> but yeah. that's crazy. You always want to put on for the city. We got so spiritual so quick. <laughs> like yeah, had, it, it felt <laughs> real deep in there. I know. Like it was real. I but that was good. No. You need that history. You but need what that I, game. What I tell you, we gonna do the real interview, right, <laughs> the yeah, real yeah. shit <laughs> afterwards. No but the whole point that they're up here is because of seven thirteen day, seven one three day. It's yeah. Saturday, so Kiki, obviously everyone in H Town is very familiar. But for our our national viewers, right, what is seven one three day? It's a it's a it's a celebration of our our city on mm-hmm. July thirteenth. That's our area code. That's our city day seven one three day. So anything that all the tastemakers, the entertainers, and um, you know DJs, whatever radio, whatever we always want to call seven one three day, just a day of giving back to the city. We playing yep. Houston music. We going, we eating in Houston restaurants. We doing everything, you know, it's 713 day. So I always throw an event. I almost, most of the time I always bring out some of the, you know, more popular artists in the city. I bring out Slim and Bun mm-hmm. and whoever. And we always perform and have a great time. This particular year, I just um, decided to salute all the DJs in the city for playing all the music, getting us where we were supposed to be. And um, I brought out a few of my DJ friends that I deal with on, you know, on a, regular basis and told them come out and help me salute the djs and we're just gonna do it like that man we're gonna go from six to ten at eight wonder brewery we um we saluting the djs and then i'm gonna perform with a live band it's gonna be beautiful and i saw a video from the 20th anniversary it had a lot of slabs out there is yeah, it the same yeah yeah it's the same it's okay the same. a lot of people come out the slabs come out man we have a good time man. ain't nothing gonna stop us not even a little rain we coming out we doing our thing we're gonna have a whole um, self-made 713 Legend Talk brand out that everybody's been waiting on, man, that I've been putting on hold for a couple of months, and I'm pulling it out for 713 Day. So we're just going to have a good time. We're going to rock and roll, 713 Day, this July 13th, this Saturday. And he probably not got the 7-Eleven shirt on. Make me so mad because today's free, sur- free slurpee day. Ain't got no 7-Elevens here, man. <laughs> He's like, hey, the hey, closest hey, one man. they got is in Manville. Exactly. Like, be like, I can wait. I'm like, come on, man. I yeah. was so mad about that. But Mark, Mar- Marcus is performing on yes. Saturday, correct? Uh-huh. Who else? I know you got DJs. You're performing. That's it, really. Is this Marcus? Okay. Well, we just we're not we're gonna have a c- couple little surprise performances. But I didn't make a a performance. I I, I invited out all the performers mm-hmm. if they want to come out and celebrate their DJs. These are, you know, I'm I'm just done it for them this year. So I gave them the sets without having to say, man, here go the mic, somebody turn it on, go, man, you just do your thing in your set, man, play whatever Houston, play whatever set you want to play, however Houston you feeling as a DJ. And then we're going to come on and rock out with a live band, something different, mellow it out. It's going to be multicultural. All right. So it's, 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 it's game on. Let's go. Marcus, you going to hit the South Side then? I might hit the south side. <laughs> might hit the south side. I might see me hit it. Twenty two oh two. Yeah, when I that moved is, here, that was the first thing that they, they were like, "You have to learn how to right, do this." I'm like, respect. Hey, we don't we, we don't do that in Seattle. You ain't bro, from the so city. If you, if you don't know how to hit the south side, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, seven thirteen days of Saturday. Anything else, Kiki? Oh, quality over quantity. That's the new single that's mm-hmm. out by Marcus. You know, that's going on our um Self Made Three. Self Made Three, the album that I do every year. Okay. Um, it's coming out in about eh, six seven weeks. And um, this was the first single. The video is out right now. Uh, we finna get ready to do a full run on the song, getting ready to shoot another video. We're just working, man, just trying to see what, like I say, where hard work can get us, what we can do, man, just have a little fun at the same time of doing, but the album is on the way. 
and quite it over quantity. It's, rolling, now. it's, it's rocking. It's warming up right now. now. Our streaming platform. Go get that. He's earning it, putting that sweat equity. But it's all right, even though it don't come out in six, seven weeks. They <laughs> well, hear. Well, you can get it now. Okay. You can get oh, okay. You can get, you can get the song now. Yeah, the single is out on all platforms. The single is out on all platforms. The video is out. You can go to. Um, my link tree and Dunkey713 for the IG. You can mm-hmm. go in there, check it out. But it's everywhere. YouTube is everywhere. Check the video out. Vote for it. And um, like it, subscribe, do everything, whatever you do with videos. And um, the sec- the album is coming out in six, seven weeks, Seth May 3. But you're going to know because they're here every week, I'm telling you. they they about to be on payroll. I'm going to give them a key card. Stay tuned. <laughs> y'all stay tuned. It's the Audi 93.7 The Beat.